Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm super excited about this video, um, and there's a lot of stuff to cover. We are talking about what to do when a horse gets scared. Uh, we're going to cover a little bit about what to do when a horse spooks, what to do, uh, how to check those, those warning signs, check in with your horse, and then what can you do about it. Um, I asked on my Facebook page, what are some issues you guys have been having specifically with fear with your horses? Not your own fear. We'll try to do another video about that. This is about the horses. And um, someone asked, you know, their horse kind of gets nervous in, in groups. And what can they do other than endlessly lunging in circles? And I'm glad someone brought that up because we're going to talk about that as well. Should you lunge your horse? Are endless circles good? What can you do? Uh, there's a lot of this could be controversial. I'm not calling out specific trainers, but I'm going to go back to what I teach, which is get the brain, don't worry, and then the feet will come. And a lot of trainers will teach you get the feet and the brain will come. And I am going to show you what I think is proof why that doesn't work. So I have quotes from a lot of different writers here, and the links are all in the description of this video. So if you want to go read their full article, some are short, some are long, you can go ahead and check their research and not to say research like papers, but their anecdotal evidence from all of their training as well. So hopefully this will get you guys started. And I really, I mean, I just want to know uh, what your guys, what your guys thoughts are. Okay, so we're gonna jump right in. Fear. What is fear? So we're going to read this quote here. This is from Willing Equine. She's on Facebook and she has a blog. Quote, I never try to stop my horses from spooking and I certainly never punish them for it. How many of us have been guilty of that? Uh, punish them for it by moving their feet, yanking the lead, backing them up, etc. A spook is a reflex that the horse has little control over. It is a fear reaction and correcting your horse for being afraid won't stop your horse from experiencing fear. It will only tell the horse that they need to suppress their fear response because you're bigger and scarier. Honestly, just think about that paragraph there, that last sentence, uh, two sentences. A spook is a reflex that the horse has little control over. It's a fear reaction, just like we have fear reactions if for all of you that we're talking about being afraid of getting on your horse. Uh, and correcting your horse for being afraid won't stop the horse from exper experiencing fear, just like me telling you not to be afraid won't fix it. It will only tell the horse that they need to suppress their fear response because you're bigger and scarier. Now, I know most of you guys and me, we don't want the horse to be afraid of us. The quote continues, they may stop displaying obvious behavioral signs when scared, but they will still be experiencing fear, which means an adrenaline spike and a cortisol spike. It'll just be suppressing until one day they can't handle it anymore. Before long, you may find yourself in the shoes of many equestrians saying things like, quote, my horse just blew up out of nowhere. I don't know what happened. We were going along fine and he just went crazy. He's dangerous and unpredictable. Punishing horses for communicating how they feel about a scary situation uh, is like a parent punishing their child for being scared of monsters in the closet. Fear is a very real emotional state for both humans and horses that can be overcome through force, that, that can't be overcome through force. Punishment may temporarily make the child stop whimpering and waking you up in the middle of the night, but that child is still terrified in their bed, hearing and seeing all kinds of monsters coming to eat them in the dark. Punishment did not make the child suddenly feel better or get over their fear, just made the child stop vocalizing their fear. The fear is still there, and actually it may increase their fear when they're not being comforted or being responded to. Fear of monsters, fear of the dark, and now fear of their parent. And we don't want the horse, end quote, the willing equine, and we don't want our horses to have that response. Okay, uh, hang on. All right, so continuing on, fear. We need to respond to the horse's fear but not with punishment, not with lunging, not with yanking and backing them up. Like the quote said, it's just a natural reflex and response for the horse. Every horse can have it at any time. And suppressing it, being bigger, bigger and scarier than the spook, is never something you want for a trusting relationship. I know you guys are smart. You can correlate that to your own experiences or experience if you've experiences you've heard from other people, uh, why we don't want to just be bigger bigger and scarier than the other thing. Imagine if, if a husband and wife had that relationship where one of them 
was afraid of something, but because they were afraid of their spouse suppressed that fear, that's never a good thing. Okay, moving on. So something to think about fear in, in a different way there. That's super important. <clears throat> okay. Oh, all right. So next, thresholds. <clears throat> I have a video, the link is in the description, about thresholds with horses. We all have them. Let me go ahead first before we do anything else. Let me show you this image. This is the threshold scale. And I'm going to show you this and then read a quote so it'll hopefully make sense to you guys. Under, at the bottom, the yellow is a safe zone. Ideally, this is where you always want your horse to be, especially when training and handling. Because, of course, in the pasture, they can be afraid. That's not necessarily your fault. At threshold, caution. The horse has recognized the presence of a stimulus that could be considered frightening. And it doesn't matter if there's actually something the horse should be scared of. He is. Over, danger. This is the level which the horse is reacting through fight or flight to a stimulus it finds frightening. That means it doesn't matter where you are, on top of them, next to them, the horse is going to react, and the result may or may not be that you get hurt. So let me read another quote from the Willing Equine. Again, the link is in the description below the article. Here you go. When a horse is under threshold, they are showing no fear or anxiety towards the stimulus presented. Say if you were going to get them used to a tarp or something, but this applies to anything that's around them. They will remain completely calm and relaxed. They are experiencing no fear. Consider this the safe zone. This is ideally where you want your horse to remain at all times. Don't we all? It is important to note that this is not to be confused with learned helplessness. More on that later. The state in which a horse no longer responds to stimulus because it has learned it can't get away from it, so it might as well give up and accept its fate. This is the same mental, mental state that a prey animal being chased down by predators assumes when it is no longer able to try escaping, usually uh, due to an exhaustion or injury. When a horse is at threshold, they have reached the point where they will go from showing no fear or anxiety to showing some awareness of the stimulus. Ears perked, eyes a little bit wider, faster breathing, more anxiety and wrinkles in the face. This is to be the be cautious zone. This is before you get hurt. Now, granted, sometimes when a horse spooks, it goes from relaxed to over threshold, and you can't always prevent that, but a lot of times we can. More about that as we get to trigger stacking. This is the be cautious zone, the zone which your horse can escalate dangerously or could cool back down to the safe zone. You have options if you pay attention. When a horse is over threshold, they are showing apparent signs of distress, anxiety, and fear toward the stimulus. This is the point which your horse's flight, fight, or flight response has been triggered, this is the danger zone, because they are now no longer thinking, they are reacting to that fear, uh, and it's important to be aware of that. Okay. Um, Alright, next is trigger stacking. Uh, let, me, let me show you this threshold image again, the fear threshold scale. Uh, you want to stay under. That's your goal anytime you're with your horse, whether you're training a young horse or you have an older horse and you're riding. That's always your goal. Um, all right, trigger stacking. Here we go. This is the image and we're going to talk about it. Stress levels. So over on the left, you have a, a variety of things which taken individually, the horse manages uh, its emotions and stays with you. The stress levels stay below. We talked about the, the threshold. <laughs> we're going to go back to the uh, under threshold is either one of those. Improper saddle fit, the horse is still under threshold. Being ridden away from home, still under threshold. Unbalanced rider, just as an example, still under threshold. But if you put all of those together, that's where you suddenly, it says bucking, but it could be anything. It could be spinning, it could be, it could be that your horse goes at threshold where they start to get uh, anxious and nervous. And maybe your horse just jigs on the trail and doesn't do anything that bad, but you know something's wrong. And this is where your fear might kick in and you're like, ooh, this might be dangerous for me to stay in this place because your horse is at threshold or above threshold. And it could be because of trigger stacking. Now, I've got some really, really good quotes about trigger stacking here that I'm going to read. <laughs> trigger stacking quote number one. A lot of the time when a horse displays sudden, unwanted behavior that appears to have come from nowhere, Trigger stacking is to blame. So let's say your horse isn't afraid of tarps. Let's say your horse is good with the wind. 
Let's say your horse has a little bit of back pain, but he's feeling okay for the most part. But what if you have a windy day and a tarp blows and your horse has pain and all of those things put him over threshold? That's called trigger stacking and he may decide to buck. It's not just the saddle and it's not just the wind and it wasn't the tarp. And it, making your horse work and getting upset at him isn't going to fix the problem that his back is sore. And adding that with all those other things made him react in a way that his reflexes told him to react. And I'm sure we have some comments here and uh, none of them are showing up. So let me uh, try to see if I can fix this. Because I know I always like to um, comments. Okay, come on. No, still no more comments. Okay, I will try to refresh this. I'm going to keep going though. All right, that was trigger stacking quote one. Here's quote two. Uh, if you feel your horse is tense about something, make sure you pay attention and let him know you care by letting him look and investigate. This does not mean forcing him to walk up to it or move away to a safer distance. Yes, if your horse is really scared of something, moving away so that he goes back to under threshold is one of the best things you can do. Don't force him to stay and investigate. Stay and investigate. That might mean go farther away. It doesn't mean you let the horse win. Let us get rid of that term. It isn't real. By forcing your horse to stay or go closer, you're reinforcing his fear or training him that you're bigger and scarier that you're bigger and scarier than the thing that he is naturally afraid of as a prey animal. Don't force him to stay and investigate. That will only increase the triggers that are already stacking. So let's say he's nervous now. By moving closer, also called proximity, by increasing the proximity, you're increasing how scary that thing is. Now, there are some horses that are happy to walk up and investigate something because they're not they're not very scared of it, and they've been reinforced for walking in and touching things, and that's a good thing, and we want to encourage that. But if your horse is scared and getting more scared when you're getting closer, that is probably not the best time to walk up and do more investigating. Again, links are all in the description below. Okay, uh, one of the things I didn't have time to research and find was signals, was an article or quotes that talk about all the signals that tell you the horse is stressed. But... Let's go ahead and talk about that. Anyway, we know a lot of them. Let's talk about the very first basic one. How to tell if your horse has any level of stress or anxiety. It's so simple. You can see if you're on the ground. You can see if you're a long ways away from the horse or if you're riding. Here it is. Is the horse's head above the level of the withers? The, if it is above the level of the withers, there is some level of stress in your horse. If the head is below the withers, you have a much lower stress. Talk about trigger stacking. If your horse's head is pretty high, most likely uh, what you're going to be dealing with is a horse that's some level of anxiety, and that's one trigger right there. Already nervousness is present because the head is up. And you know why this is a problem? Because gated people train gated horses to ride with their head up, and that's a problem because you've already added one trigger. They're already nervous and upset, and they're showing it in their headset. That's the first sign that you know something's up. You can also look. We all know that if you start to see the whites of their eyes, they're concerned. If they start blowing hard and breathing hard, even if their head's down, that's a sign that they're under stress and they're worried and concerned. They can have wrinkles around their mouth and tension there. The tail starts to swish and it's not it flies. That's a problem. Those are all signs your horse is telling you they're starting to go above threshold or where they're not comfortable, they're at threshold or above. Heed those warning signs. If you don't, you deserve to get hurt. Now, I don't really mean that. Like, I don't want anybody to get hurt. But if you're riding horses and you don't know to look for these signals and back off, it's not unexpected what will happen next. Now, I've already mentioned earlier in the video that we can sometimes have horses that will spook suddenly. They went from relaxed to spooking. That's tricky. And I'm going to put those in a separate pile. We're not going to really address that right now. But most of the time, you can tell. I worked with a horse uh, in Alabama this past, was it in April? And uh, they were said he was scared of bags. Okay, this plastic bags. I love this story. And unfortunately, the video isn't very good or I'd show you. So they said the horse, they've tied the bags up on the fence. They've done groundwork, ground penning. And the horse is absolutely terrified of plastic bags. They're like, 
they're like, you're not even going to believe how scared he is on plastic bags, Ivy. So I said, all right, we'll go ahead and get a plastic bag out. And what I ended up doing is I stood the horse maybe 30, 40 feet away. We're in an arena. And I had um, one of the ladies take a bag and just wave it one time. And you know what the horse did? His head went up a little bit and he looked at it, but he didn't move his feet. So clearly by his head coming up, he went from being completely below threshold to at threshold. But when we put the bag down, his head dropped back down showing he went back to being below threshold, which is where we want him to be. And we continue this process by waving it, and he's still just standing there. I'm just sitting on him, very relaxed. We'd wave it and then stop and let him put his head down. And then we wave it a little harder and then stop and let him put his head down. And he hasn't moved his feet, and I'm not making him go up to it. And we continued working closer and closer until I got about 20 feet away, and you could see that his anxiety was coming back, so we stopped, which is what we're talking about, about being calm. We stopped and we talked to the owner some more and they said, yeah, we never started across the round pen, right? Sometimes if a horse is scared of something, you start farther away, not closer. When what they said they did is they basically chased him around, which we're going to get into that uh, when we talk about desensitizing. Chasing him around is not the same thing as keeping a horse under threshold. If your horse is running, let me give you a clue. They're over threshold. That's way past the point of being safe and having the horse learn. Okay, uh, let's look at a couple other quotes here. This is about calming signals, which are when the horse is somewhat stressed, uh, when they release stress, they give calming signals like licking and chewing, yawning, taking a deep breath, pooping. Now, it doesn't mean that they're completely relaxed, but it means they've released some tension. So this is the first quote. Calming signals in horses are somewhat similar, uh, are somewhat similar and include looking away, having lateral ears, yawning, stretching down, dropping their head, licking lips, or eating to calm themselves. Can you recognize them? Calming cues communicate stress because they are stressed. That's why they need to calm down. And at the same time, release stress. It's an important point. Uh, this is by Anna Blake, and she has a book called Calming Signals. Uh, calming cues communicate stress and at the same time release stress. It is modeling behavior for us. They want us to drop our stress level or aggressiveness as well. So they're responding to us, I mean, or outside stimuli, depending on what the format is. All right, next one is for by One Horse Life. Uh, I really, really like a lot of her work. She says, I believe that whenever your horse is communicating that's, that the stress level is growing, you we should immediately stop whatever we're doing. Yes, completely agree. We should take a break and reconnect with our inner self until our horse fully relaxes again. I don't always do that, but if you do, that's okay. Whenever I see horses presenting any of the calming signals, I give up on whatever I've been doing. Training a stressed horse is pointless and dangerous if you're riding them. Your horse's muscles are tense, and you probably teach your horse the wrong movement patterns within the exercise. Why do you think I teach head down? You want relaxation. Also, all short-term memory slots are full of stress information. And you won't be able to teach anything new to your horse during that time. Continuing your training with your horse is present that is presenting calming signals is literally a waste of time for you and your horse. Start thinking about different trainers you've seen training when you've seen calming signals. And they tell you that those signals mean the horse is learning. But what it really means is that at some point, the horse was very stressed. Just think about that and apply it to what you've seen in other people. And a series, uh, so teaching when the horse is presenting calming signals is a serious strain on trust. Maybe in time your horse will stop communicating his feelings and emotions to you, seeing that there's no point in communicating because nobody is listening. Ouch. And you know what? I've been guilty of that. I'll just say it. I've, I've been guilty of pushing horses when they were not calm. And I regret it. I can think of those experiences very specifically and with great regret. And you know what? Nothing was trained. I got frustrated, the horse got frustrated, and trust was lost. It's, it's sad. <clears throat> I will get to questions in a little bit, but I want, I have more stuff. Okay, learned helplessness. We mentioned it earlier. Let's talk about learned helplessness. And I want, I know this is going to seem like I'm bashing. I want you to think about trainers that you've seen doing this, because it's bad. There's links in the description if you want to learn more about it. Learned helplessness is a methodology often practiced by people who are unaware that they're doing it. Uh, methodology that, so learned helplessness is a methodology that punishes the horse for being a horse. It punishes a horse that attempts 
that attempts to make the horse calm and thus trainable. Oh, there's some interesting uh, punctuation. But usually only succeeds in making them sour and sometimes belligerent, even dangerous. So learned helplessness is a way of, of putting the horse in a situation where they can't escape and coming at them with whatever it is, a saddle, a tarp, a blanket, a plastic bag, a whip, a person, and continuing to come at them until they basically shut down because they can't get away. They've, they've had so much adrenaline, so much cortisol as a prey animal. And they especially have this where they can just shut down and stop thinking. And it looks like they've calmed down and they've accepted it. What they've done is gone inside themselves and are no longer learning and they have completely shut down. It is a methodology that relies on domination punishment, and exhaustion. Humans or horses who have learned to be helpless have had their intrinsic motivation. That desire that horses have that they want to please us, which we see in little, in young horses, in, in green horses, that gets stolen from them. Intrinsic motivation is the desire to do something because you want to and because you enjoy it. Isn't that what we want our horses to do? Because meeting the challenges provides you with fulfillment. You guys need to see my quarter horse, Jackson. He loves doing what he does because it's a challenge. When horses or humans lose that motivation, they do things only because they have to. They go to school or jump a jump because they have no choice because all they're trying to do is avoid punishment. Do you think you have horses that are doing things just to avoid punishment? This directly relates to fear. And because if your horse has got learned helplessness or is doing things just because they're, you're bigger and scarier, we have a problem. The relationship is not there. The horse is doing it solely because he's now afraid of you or the trainer that taught it to him or the whip or the spurs. It's a sobering thought. This has been really interesting for me to research this and read about this. Okay, two more quotes, guys, or uh, one more quote. All right, talking about fear, let's talk briefly about desensitization methods. I'm going to go through this very quickly, and then we'll get to your questions, and then we'll talk about how to apply these principles. You have flooding. Flooding is that learned helplessness where you have the horse and you you put him in an area, a stall, a round pen, a paddock where he can't get away and you come at him with a stimulus until his learned helplessness kicks in, until his body shuts down because he's afraid and he stands there and accepts it. That's called flooding. And you'll see it most prominently uh, at Road to the Horse where they only have two or three days and they go at the horse with ropes and whips, and saddles, and gear, and even though they're not beating up on the horse, that horse has been flooded. He has had gone from not being handled to having all of this thrown at him, and he starts to shut down. Called flooding. Suppression, where your horse jumps at something, and you, let's say you you have a, a tarp, and your horse runs away, and so you chase him around, not with a tarp, you make him lunge until he stops, and then you move the tarp again, and you lunge him. It's kind of a, it's a, part of learned helplessness, but not exactly. You've taught him that you're going to make him work if he gets scared of it rather than getting letting him get used to it. Operant counter conditioning is very similar to some of these other ones where we're operant is we're teaching him to by using like clicker training to get him used to something like a tarp. Stimulus blending is bringing in a tarp or a scary object so gradually the horse doesn't really notice it. Excuse me. Counter conditioning, that's easy. You have a tarp on the ground and you put food on it. The horse eventually goes to investigate and eats the food off of the tarp. That's counter conditioning. He starts to associate something good like the food with the tarp. You can do that um, with girth. So you can, you can touch a horse and give him food at the same time or start to put uh, start to touch his ears and give him food at the same time and take your hand away. That would be counter conditioning. Systematic desensitization or habituation is where you hang things up like just habituation is hanging stuff up i believe in getting horses used to it just by having it around them you don't chase them you hang up tarps in their stall in their pasture you leave the saddle out that's called habituation and animals do it in the wild all the time and then approach conditioning which i really hadn't heard of before so this is new to me so approach conditioning was the idea that you have a horse who's afraid of a tarp and you have a helper and you have the helper with the tarp far away so the horse is not above threshold and they start walking away and you ask you encourage the horse to follow that tarp and praise it when he starts to follow it so that's apparently called approach conditioning i had not heard of it so i have to do more research but that's the little bit that i know all right Yeah, all right. We're going to go through some questions, and then we're going to talk about applications. 
Does a horse intentionally act naughty? No. Horses do what works, just like all other animals out there. If the horse bangs on the stall and he gets food, then he knows banging on the stall will bring him food. Horses can learn in those kinds of things, but generally, horses don't act naughty. They do what works. If a pony uh, bucks their rider off and runs home because they don't like the rider, that's just something they've learned gets rid of something that's irritating, just like they would do with a fly. So when I brought my horse Jackson down to Texas, they have these really big flies. Jackson would run around like crazy and his eyes are wide because he's got a fly on his back and it's hurting him. Well, imagine if you have a 150 pound rider on your back and a saddle that hurts you and you're trying to get rid of it. What do you think your horse will do? Actually, I think it's amazing that horses don't buck us off more often. Uh, that's May asked that question. Diana says, great info. Deanna Marie says she has good info and I learned from her, but she seems tense. Oh, I seem tense? <sighs> Probably because I am, because I'm trying to go through all of this material quickly. Um, Donna says, great information. May says, I have a friend who says her horse is just being a brat. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about anthropomorphization, but we are going to say that a lot of those times, those are excuses for bad training or not checking the horse to make sure that there's something physically wrong. A lot of bad behaviors, if they're not caused by fear, they're often caused by pain and are rarely checked out. I have a video about that. Is it pain? I'll try to put that link in the description. Mary says, my super easygoing four-year-old Tennessee walking horse gelding always ran in place suddenly when horses are leaving him ahead. He's a little slower than some or rushing up from behind. I thought he was getting better with age and all I did was give him quick check and release and talk to him until he seemed calm and focused on me until six weeks ago on a windy day. He was worse than usual and three times he had littler episodes that I rode fine. The fourth threw me off center, forward, and off, breaking my pelvis. Ow. Now I'm healing and wondering if I'm sending him mixed signals or should do something different. I thought he bucked, but hubby said, uh, thinks I checked him too hard. Not afraid to be firm, but I'm not inclined to lose my cool. Now I'm a little psyched out riding him, and we've ridden him easy and often since he was two. I love him tons, but can't keep breaking bones. Okay. Uh, it sounds like, so he's, huh. Okay. So many things, but I love that you mentioned that it was windier. We talked about trigger stacking, Mary, and you mentioned that it was windier that day. That's probably one of the reasons it could have been worse. Let's just say that. Also, does he have pain? Was the saddle hurting him that day? Did, were his feet tender? I mean, those are all legitimate questions to ask. Um, let's just talk about this. You started riding him at two. I'm going to say, I do not recommend riding two-year-old horses. I don't actually recommend riding three-year-olds. I actually don't think you should be trail riding four-year-olds. Their bones haven't closed and their bodies have not developed for long rides. I would encourage you to take it easy. Also, mentally, he's showing you mentally he's not ready for other horses to leave him, and yet you ride with people that go faster than you. Mind blown. I don't want you to get hurt and bucked off, but you kind of asked for it. You put a young horse in repeated situations where you had to hold him back. You didn't, it doesn't sound like, you spent any time training with people that will stay at your speed to get him to relax when horses go away. You have a buddy sour horse who, I'm so sorry you got hurt. I never want anybody to get hurt, but it sounds like you kind of asked for it. And I, I mean that in the nicest way possible. I'm doing it to be controversial and negative right now, so just ignore me. I want people to hear this. Stop doing these things. So, when you go back to riding, let's, let's check for pain. He is young. His back might not be developed. He might be have a growth spurt and be sore. Let's take a look at pain because it could have been the trigger stacking the wind plus the pain made that day be harder. Also, you say you were thrown off. Okay. Um, check your saddle. Check the fit. Check the fit for you. <clears throat> if you're using the same saddle on him without adjusting, it probably is causing back pain. Nancy says, I would like to help my horse become more comfortable with cattle by using clicker training. Any suggestions? So I'm not going to address the clicker training because you can do that. The idea is go where there are cows and stay far away. And honestly, if there's grass, start 100 feet away, 300 feet away and let the horse graze and ask him to go a little bit closer. If he starts to get anxious, leave. Just walk away. Let him eat. And you can use the clicker training and the treats the same way as you do the grass. But if you see that head come up or you see that nervousness, you need to retreat back to where he's under threshold. Betty says, please, people, high-headed horses are not sec sexy. <laughs> Thank you. If you don't encourage relaxation, you are reducing the value of those horses if they ever need to be rehomed. Betty, Thank you so much for saying that. I totally agree, and I appreciate all those people that'll say it out loud, too. Lisa says, love Anna Blake. Glad you mentioned her. Yep, and links to articles below. I always 
mention those people I quote. Bonnie says, how do you handle coming up to scary spot on the trail with your horse? Do you prefer to calmly retreat as soon as you reach threshold and use the approach or retreat method? And would you ever back up from the scary thing or only turn to leave? Well, every situation is is different, of course. And so I'm not going to say like one size fits all. Uh, when you come to a scary spot on the trail, uh, you have to be, you want to get your horse relaxed. So if that means backing up or turning, it depends on the severity. If you think your horse is about to turn and bolt, I would back up rather than turn around. But if you know your horse isn't actually going to bolt, I would turn and walk away. Um, if you're really worried that your horse is going to bolt, I would kind of keep them facing it. Um, because I don't want to let them get ahead of steam. Because again, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, and then work on head down. Work on softness. Get off if you need to. Get on. Give a treat. See if your horse is willing to look at it and walk past it. If your horse will not walk past it, it might be time to work on some desensitizing or some work on uh, obstacles and possibly work on your go forward cue. <clears throat> Karen says, seems like round penning is a common method to run a horse to exhaustion. Seems like a form of learned helplessness. Karen, you're right. Round penning, the way most people use it, if you make the horse work, is a form of learned helplessness. Terry says, I'm so glad you addressed riding young horses. It makes me angry. I'm an equine body worker and see so many problems with young horses that have been started and ridden so young. Yeah, I I, I get so mad when people say they're riding their three-year-old and they're trail riding. Mad isn't the right. I feel so sad because there's no reason to. I have a two-year-old filly. She's a gated horse and she's big. Like she's filled out. She's gonna, she's big. A lot of people, she's big enough. She's gonna, she's probably very close to 15 hands. A lot of people at two would be like, oh, you could start riding her. Now, I'm not opposed to someone sliding on her back and sitting there for a minute. Or, or even riding her for five minutes. But when people take two and three and four-year-olds who are not always mentally ready, some are, some aren't, not going to make a solid rule there. They take those horses and they go trail riding. And some of them are very calm. But like uh, Terry said, their bodies will break down. Now, I've also had people comment on my videos and say, I've been riding horses for years and I had horses that I rode into their 20s and I started them young. Well, OK, there's anecdotal evidence all the way all over. Karen says, I put treats in a plastic bag, and when they do what I ask, I bring out the bag and give her a treat. This works for her, and she comes running to me. And that's great. And I, I really want uh, people to see <laughs> that it, it doesn't have to be learned helplessness. It doesn't have to be round penning. Let's, let's address some of the questions that I asked earlier. So um, I haven't really looked at these. I'm going to be addressing these one at a time. Some of them may apply, and if it's about the rider, we're not addressing them in this video, but we will get to them uh, in another video. I'm sorry. Okay, so I asked the question. <clears throat> she said, we're talking about fear in horses. Do you have any specific fear issues you're dealing with? All right, and we're going to go through these questions. Stephanie says, just being generally uh, very alert and even worried whilst also being curious. She sometimes scares herself when she goes to investigate things. She never does truly crazy things, but can do a 180 without running without running though. Okay. That's normal. I've seen that with lots of horses, especially young horses, like my mare, my filly, that's two. She tends to do that. She's very curious as most horses are if they've been allowed to be curious, but she can spook. What we want to teach them is, is to trust us. And so very alert and even worried means, <laughs> so, that, so think about it, Stephanie, what situation are you in that she's nervous? Most of the time, if we're in the pasture, uh, the horses are not nervous. So did you go someplace she's nervous? If that's the cause, you need to work at going back or getting her to be below threshold in that place before you introduce anything. We need to keep asking the horse to go below threshold, asking them to soften and drop their head, touch a target down low. Don't make them put their head down. Don't run them around till they're tired, but actually ask them to, to soften. So hopefully that makes sense. If she's nervous, now is not the time to let her investigate. We want to get her relaxed before you introduce that scary thing. Lisa says a concrete bridge. She is fine if she goes second, but will not lead. She's fine going over wooden bridges. That's probably just a confidence issue. Why don't you take a whole bunch of food that she likes, and the next time you come to a concrete bridge, step off, go as close as she will with before she gets nervous. That may be 20 feet away, and it might be right at the edge, because maybe she just walks to the edge and stops. And start feeding her food. Like, literally, just shove handfuls of food in her face. Don't ask her to go forward. Just give her food. Let her chew. Seriously, chewing helps horses relax. Let her chew. Walk away from the bridge. 
Did you hear me? I said, walk away from the bridge. Walk back to the bridge. Give her some more food. Walk away. Walk back. See if she'll follow you. Now, not talking about pulling on or having somebody beat her. See if she'll follow you onto the bridge. And as soon as she's on, shove food in her face. Sh shove that food. Grain, oats, you can bring chopped hay, whatever if she's got, you know, bring food. Shove food in her face when she's on there. And then walk off. Let her know that you're going to take her off the bridge. Then maybe get on, walk her up to the edge, reach down and give her a treat. And then see if she'll walk over it. My guess is if you try this, since we know she's not terrified of it because she'll follow a horse, this won't be a big deal. Uh, Marla says, my guy gets scared and bolts, totally loses his mind. So, horses that bolt. I do believe there are some horses that might bolt to kind of get away or there was something scary and, and they decide that running is their best option. Usually that could be a training issue, possibly. But if he gets scared, if it's not a sudden thing, you need to retreat to where he's not scared. Now, if that means back to the trailer or back to your house, do that. Get him calm again. See if you can go a little bit out or a little bit close to the thing and ask for head down. My Kentucky Mountain saddle horse is super afraid of dogs on the street. Not the barn dogs, though. Dogs that charge fences make him flee at warp speed sideways. Also large trucks like garbage trucks, air brakes, uh, this is Nina, uh, uh, tossing bags, etc. When I asked politely, the guy stopped what they're doing and let us far off the road, but the fear is still there. So overall, not fun to ride on a suburban street. Hey, I understand the anxiety. With each, with each encounter, his anxiety grows. Hence, I do a lot of riding when the trail horse I bought. Okay, so let's talk about your Kentucky Mountain. He's afraid of dogs that charge the fence. Great. Learning opportunity. Let's bring some food or let him eat grass. So you're going to find the fence where you know the dogs charge. And your goal is not to go past that until your horse is relaxed. So if your horse is terrified of dogs that run up to the fence, you're going to start 100 feet away. And those dogs hopefully are, are barking. And you're going to feed him some food. And your goal is to keep his head below level, to keep him below threshold. Keep him below threshold. And only go closer when he can stay relaxed about it. And you're going to feed food. Every time he goes closer, give him some food and move away. Trust me, this moving away thing is big. It shows the horse that you're listening, that you're responding to his fear and not ignoring it. And then continue to do that with different things you encounter. And my guess is if you spend two or three or four hours with one thing, say the dog's barking along the fence, and show that you're listening to him and that you're not letting him get above threshold, that you're going to be able, that he'll get, he'll get more and more confident with other things. Hannah says, what about shadows? In the woods, she's okay, but going down the flat road, she sees her shadow and thinks she can run, maneuver it, and forget to listen to me. Well, why don't you start on the ground and go on the road, and, and when she sees her shadow, give her food, and keep giving her food until she's relaxed, and don't go anywhere until she's relaxed. Uh, I mostly exclusively ride on the road, um, but I want the horses to be calm, and it means I won't go down the road, I won't go 200 feet away from my home unless the horses are relaxed. Lisa says, my guy gets afraid when separated from his paddock mate when we trail ride. He's a Rocky Mountain gelding. Um, so herd bound, not really herd bound. They're on the trail together. But if the horses get between us, he has a panic attack. Well, Lisa, that's a great question. Thanks for clarifying. It sounds like you need to do some training. So if you're trail riding and you go with a friend, have the two of your horses together. You're going along and then have your friend come between. But before your horse gets upset, go back together and feed some treats, and then start to separate and go back together. Show the horse that when he gets scared, your goal isn't to make him stay scared, but to try to relieve that fear. Okay. Uh, Danica says, confidence on the ground. When I'm leading my horse, he gets nervous or scared. He'll rear up, get really pushy, or try to run through me. I get really nervous. I don't blame you, and don't know how to correct this behavior. So don't think about correcting it. Think about having him do things. So we had a horse who was very scared, terrified, and pushy on the ground uh, at a clinic this past year in Ohio. Uh, but he was basically rearing up a little, running on, over his owner, running over me. So here's a couple things. First, go in a safe area, round pen, arena, pasture, where you can be safe. Have him on a long lead rope or a lunge line. Have gloves if you're worried about him pulling on you and your hands getting burned or, you know, rubbed. Um, and rope burn. And Throw and work in a small area, small area, and throw some poles. Anything that he has to step over on the ground. Get him to start thinking about his feet. And your goal is to start getting him to relax. Now, we talked about going over threshold. If your horse is already scared, you need to back off 
and get to where they're comfortable. And I mean that. Back off. Go where they're actually calm and then try to introduce the tarp. And if he flips out, it's probably because you went too fast. Show him that you're going to build up his confidence and not by running at him with the tarp or waving it or starting 10 feet away. Start 50 feet away if you need to. Uh, Wendy says, now that I've had my summer back in the saddle, I notice he gets really spiked up in crowds. I really have to work him to get his mind on me before I can safely get him to calm down. Uh, so don't lunge him. Teach him head down. Teach him to pay attention to you in a small crowd first. And take the time. Don't plan to go on a ride. Ask him to stay head down. Go early to an event. Go to a 4-H show, but don't show. And stay there uh, and keep take him as far away as you can or as close as he needs to be to be calm and work on head down. Give him food to eat and help him stay below that threshold. All right, I think that uh, that's all of of the questions that I had. Let me go back over to this. All right. Uh, go back down to my... All right. Down here. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> sorry, I've got lots of... Lots of I knew this would be a long video. <clears throat> okay. Ruby says, talk to my trainer through... Talk to my trainer through head down on my horse. My horse is 17 and pacey, but with head down and back... Lifted, he moves much more relaxed and is very smooth. He couldn't believe the difference in him and love the concept. Oh, oh, that makes me so happy. I am so glad. I so want to do a course just for trainers, like especially good trainers like Ruby has who did it. He, Ruby talked through what we needed to do and it's so much better. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, Rhonda says, my horse can go through an obstacle course with no problem. The big problem is birds. I use a lunge whip and a, with a flag on the end when I ride him in the winter and he's good with that. If I can only get him to stop even for a brief second, I can get him through. It's not an issue if he goes on a high, if he goes on high alert. When he spooks, it's immediate and he doesn't stop. He spins and bolts. A large bird that flies up next to him, he'll put you on the ground. Okay. Um, a genuine fear when he sees a large bird close by. Those darn turkeys. Yeah, it's hard to work through that. <clears throat> what I well, some of the things you can do are practice having an amazing stop uh, from a canter or even a gallop. Practice that in a big field. Or the, an arena, a big arena. Literally practice that. That will help save you if they bolt. Second, uh, it's hard to set that up, of course, where you can practice it. Um, and so I don't have, like I said, spooking, a sudden spook. We're not addressing that as much, uh, except to tell you work on so that you have an amazing stop from a gallop without having to pull on the reins. Donna says, what about anxiety when they get on the trail? My Paso is good on the road, but as soon as we get on the trail, he's, he spins many times. Uh, he, he knows and will spin many times. Okay, so clearly the trail is over threshold. Go back to the road, make sure his head is down there, and go on the trail five feet, then go back to the road. Does he stay calm? Gradually increase it and include food. Have him have a reason to think that trails are good. Sue says, actually on my way to Red Willow with a friend for, for each of us through an area near the barn, residential neighborhood, where she has demonstrated some worry in the past, I'm intending more frequent rides to the area. Any suggestions for this exercise? Don't, if she gets nervous, retreat. Don't push through it. Because like we said, you're not showing your horse, you're not responding to them. You're not showing that you're listening to them. Um, my horse is nervous of large vehicles, which we only meet out on rides. We have no control over when they may appear. And so it's difficult to train prior to meeting one in close proximity on the roads. Is there anything I can do to help him? He's five and it's his first year of riding. He's been walked in hands since a weanling, used to very traffic, but he's gotten nervous. That's great. You say you can't set it up, but I bet you have a driveway and a friend or husband or somebody who can drive a car and they can do it slowly and they can drive a car and you can start a hundred feet away and gradually get close so that you can drive back and forth. Your suggestions for crossing the bridge are almost identical to my trainer and I finally got Willow to get in the trailer. Excellent. Um, Annette says, I love that you address starting horses too early. Yeah, don't do it. Ride them at four and five. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't train earlier. It means don't ride them. Sue says, I've had other trainers discourage food rewards, saying it create dangerous results in situations where food isn't an option. Okay, I'm not going to address this in this video because I've talked about using food a lot in my other videos, so search for those. I have given my horses tons and tons of food and I've never gotten a situation where I needed food to, keep, say, to stay safe. Um... So it, it, that's not true. Teach your horse to be respectful about food and to stand and have good manners. And food is not a problem. Sue says, a friend just canceled on the neighborhood rides. I'm going to stay here when I get to the barn. Well, you can, or you can just, you know, ride a little bit on the neighborhood or go down 
part of a street and come back. But okay, anyway, we're going to wrap that up. If you have any questions, comment below, message me. I want to help. Check out the links. Please share this video. We really need people to see this and learn about fear and horses and how they can have a better relationship. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, guys. Go have fun riding. You got this.